Good we got from SMC Family Online. MashaAllah they put out some nice videos this week. I think one was just posted by Ali, nice animes. MashaAllah beautiful job for everybody posting, putting out. InshaAllah the NurMuhammad.com <coughs> has our Shaykh AI out so please start to play with it and train with it and we're going to build it even more with more of our own content directly into that uh, AI and that it would answer only from our source of input not from outside sources. So NurMuhammad.com and uh, you can start to click on that AI bot there inshaAllah. That's uh, the up and coming and, and Hajj Shahid has a, a app revision coming out inshaAllah in the next decade. InshaAllah, but big, big changes to the app, lots of uh, modifications so it should entertain people for a while until they find where all the buttons go, <laughs> inshaAllah. What do we got out there, inshaAllah? As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh Sayyidi on the topic of Anfusihum, does azab fall upon the student if they don't meditate and use the key to fight the oppression within and around them? <coughs> when we gave <coughs> Ayat al Kareem, what was it? 1311? Yes. 1311, inshaAllah. It was the three sections of that where Allah is saying, You're surrounded by angels then I'll never change a condition of somebody until they change what's within themselves and then the last was the warning. But when the decree of punishment comes none can change it. So it's interesting that one verse of this reality of movement is having these three sections within it. One the angelic force so people don't have to worry about like how is it going to happen. Allah is saying, you're surrounded by angels, they are energy. If they take the command and they, they receive the command, their angelic force can begin to shift the dimension of the person and the reality of the person. But the center part that they have to fix themselves and what's within themselves before their outer reality and that which is around them can change. And if they choose not to fix their inside means they become complacent and happy with their condition. If the condition is bad then Allah says, then once punishment is decreed you can't stop it at that time. So it's not polite to say if you don't meditate you get slammed by a hammer, that's not the way we talked. So the way we gave it in a subtlety that if the condition is not right and you take the teachings that you have to change within yourself. You can't say, oh uh, I don't know, I just… I live amongst a bunch of crack addicts so I, I smoke with them every week. Then Allah says, okay then when punishment comes nobody's going to stop it. So the, the reality is the solution lies within each individual person, Allah's giving it. Says if that person sits and meditates and contemplates and Allah opens for them the keys of these channels to hear this teaching because once they hear it they're now accountable for the knowledge of it. Then the shaykh is saying, connect, make your energy connection, make your connection. Allah's promising you there's angels all around you. If you make the change within yourself, the angels will begin to circumambulate an energy and move you. Because permission will come and your conditions will begin to change. And many whom have been tested all their lives, they live this life 35 years of this type of test, they move somewhere and horrible things are around them. 
Then they begin to meditate, meditate, meditate and horrific things happen to people whom are around them to move out. They don't have to go anywhere, they just had it to connect. When they connect the, all sorts of protection come out and go after everything living around them to vacate and run. Because Allah's servants don't run, Allah will make everything else run. Why? How did they do that? Because Ayatul Kareem is describing. You don't like the things around you bothering neighbors or doing this or neighbor doing that. Remember the one who had neighbors who were smoking crack and, and, and alcohol and he started to do zikr and their unit burned. Remember they, 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 they stood in a long time ago. Yeah, he came to me and said, I don't know what to do, I, well, we're here, I have my family, we're doing these things, there's some crazy neighbors doing some crazy stuff. I said, gee you do your zikr, you do your connection and it wasn't but anything and that unit burned and they vacated. Well you don't think that Allah has servants that can push out energies and, and, and make, make difficulties for people. <laughs> it's not something big but people have to have faith. They don't have to run to the woods, they just need to run inside their heart, make the connection. The angels are sufficient to cause immense amounts of disturbances and those whom warrant a disturbance and to protect those who need protection. But more so in the last days when people are saying, should I run to Istanbul to live? No, why should you run to Istanbul? There's going to be huge wars there. Do you think running is your solution? Then you're like the son of Noah when he said, get on our ship and he said, no I'm not going to get on your ship, I'm going to find my own mountain. Means it's not something about running to places, it's wherever you are is exactly where Allah wrote you to be. But He's giving an immense solution, make your zikr, make your connection the angels will begin to move things around you. If somebody has a bad intention around where you're living, the angels will begin to resolve those issues and push all badness away, which they can't even live in your vicinity because of your positive lights and, and positive energies. So it means these are at times they're going to be very miraculous. So these are or not regular understandings coming out, these are coming out from the heart of Sayyidina Mahdi for protection in last days. That's why nobody's talking about them because they don't know that reality. But for them to give to us this understanding of Ayatul Kareem that this is a, a movement of energy and that Allah is giving to us that perfect your inside, there's already an angelic force on the outside that will begin to move if they get the isharat and the command. But if the person planning on just sitting and doing the same bad thing and becoming a result of the badness outside then Allah gives a warning then when the punishment comes it came. Don't complain at that time, where was my protection, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum Salaam Wa Rahmatullah On the topic of Auzu and Bismillah Rahman Rahim, does Auzu carry a Jalali energy and Bismillah Rahman Rahim carry a Jamali energy? <coughs> I don't know about the energy, I think they carry all energies because just saying Auzu Billah is an is a understanding that our, our Auzu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem is a whole depth of being the company of Prophet and encasing yourself with a protective energy. So our whole understanding is keep yourself in protection. So we wear taweez, we make wudu, we do our prayers, we do everything but then we go to a ridiculous place take a ridiculous invitation, talk to ridiculous people, you broke the awzu. Then when you get hit with something you say, what happened? So it means it's, it's not one saying, 
it's a life. Live, living our life with the understanding of Auzubillah that everything we do we said we contemplate. If I take myself there I'm breaking my Auzu and then I have no one to blame for the attack or difficulty that comes. So when you're spiritually fighting you know that you have a shield of energy continuously around you because many angry devils at who you are and what you represent. So you have to be particularly careful that keep your shield of energy up. That's when we watch sci-fi movies and people say, oh why do you like these movies because there's a deep reality. You have a protective shield. The devils are waiting for you to break your shield because we're going to come in. And when we come in we're going to try to devastate you. So you live your life with that shield of A'udhu Billah. So at that time is it going to be Jalali, Jamali? I don't know maybe everything but the main thing is to be ever alert in everything we do. Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem is the encasing of all tajallis and the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad Inna huwa Sulaiman wa inna huwa Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. Prophet is Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, is everything. So is the crown and the reality of that reality. So it means that to draw near to the presence of Prophet don't do bad. We want to be in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad to dress us from Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem with compassion and mercy and all that it represents. Then Allah said, well then we have to be clean. So the concept of A'udhu Billah is to be in a clean state, clean mind, clean environment, clean people. Hence the beatific lights of clean people no doubt are around Sayyidina Muhammad That's why it's a nation whom is a purified clean nation and they have to be. But a lot of that is lost and will be revised in the west, not in the east. The east they lost it. So Middle Eastern markets are very filthy and dirty. And why they represent Prophet and they have such a filthy market? Why? Don't they know that Prophet taught us everything has to be clean, everything has to be washed? Your home has to be clean, has to be washed, everything about us has to be pure and purified. They lost it, they took for granted, they walked away from it like we described about the love. They think it was just there, it's granted. Love like a shirt, like faith has to continuously be taken care of. You have to nurture your relationship with your shaykh. You nurture your relationship with Prophet and most definitely you nurture the relationship with Allah It's not just a given because Prophet worn faith is like a shirt. If you don't take care of it, it gets worn out. And when you see people whom their faith is worn out everything is dirty, right? But in the west they're going to come with a different understanding. They're going to revive the cleanliness of Islam, the cleanliness and purity of their character, their appearance and their looks. And these are then Ishraqiyoon whom will rise with a very purified and perfected character of look, appearance and their understanding inside and outside. So if they have a business it should be sparkling. If they have a market they should be able to eat off the floor. We are a clean people, not a dirty people because this was the heavens, you're the representatives of paradise, inshaAllah. Sayyidi, two people asked the exact same question, uh, As Salaamu Alaykum. About a market? <laughs> As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi. Um, Walaykum As Salaam wa if the soul goes into Divinely Presence in the world of light, you mentioned that it stays there and a different reality comes back. Can you please expand? 
Allah says that every moment your Lord is in a new tajalli. Anyone whom has seen our talks over the years, we can go from laughing to anger to crying to funny to every emotion on a scale because it's like a breeze. Means whomever speaking, whatever tajalli they're giving, it's like a breeze. When it hits the subtlety of the soul and heart, it can make them cry who's talking, make them laugh, make them to be tajalli, jalali, not angry but like fierce. So it means these are the symbols that the Divinely breeze that dresses the soul is a ever-changing, nothing is constant with Allah So paradises is not one flavor staying like that for all day. So as they move into the realities of light, the infinite spectrum of tajallis is continuously dressing them. So there's never a movement in light where you come back the same, how could it be? You go to light, you come back, you're the same? No, Allah dressed a new tajalli. You go another two seconds, come back, it's a different tajalli. Just watch how when the shaykh is talking. And you see the, the fluctuations of the tajallis dressed upon the shaykhs because then that's the expression that your Lord is in a different tajalli at every moment. Because they take from the heavenly realm the subtleties of energies that are coming down, then these are the dresses upon the soul. Anyone whom begins their tafakkur and contemplation, they're looking the body and asking to move their soul into the realm of light. And that's why I said that if we speak on the realm of light there's no time. So if you sat for five minutes and you were able to make the connection, how long was that connection? When there's a realm you're dealing with that has no time. So that's why when you watch the sci-fi movies they try to give an understanding and that's why spiritual people love the sci-fi movies because it's like, oh this like that, this like this. But in a physical realm you sat and you were able to leave your energy to enter into their portal. How long did you go into that? Allah knows but when you came back it was maybe 10 minutes but in that realm there's no time. That 10 minutes equates to how much time? Allah gives different variations in Qur'an because Allah says one day is like 50,000 years in Allah's time. What does that mean? And then divide 50,000 by one day so to the 24 hours. How many years they went in that moment if they went by Allah's time? And in other verses Allah gives different set of times so it means the realm of light which is timeless. So for us to understand what you think is just a few minutes Prophet went all the way to Divinely Presence with his physicality. And Sayyidatina Isha said that his bed area was still warm by the moment he came back. So the reality of the tie and the movement, physical and spiritual they don't make sense. People look at you physical but they don't know if you're moving in the spiritual realm and how long you've been moving in that spiritual realm and came back. Before they would allow it, now because of the dajjal and to be confused with the magic of dajjal it's not allowed. But in the zikrs the shaykh would sit, the people would look and he disappeared. Not that he left the room but at any moment they're leaving and they're taking their body with them. But now there's no permission at all for that. But doesn't mean that they're sitting in the room with people, means their soul is moving only. And they can sense it with all their senses depending upon what Allah has opened for that servant. So this is not a path in which to confuse yourself amongst physical, thinking he looks like me, he's like this, he's like that but it has nothing to do with physical because this has to do with the realm of the soul. 
And where that soul is going, with what power it's going and in whose presence it's going, Allah only knows. And that's why Allah described, my saints are under my dome. Means what? Not that you don't know who's a saint or not but you don't know what authority they have and where their spirituality is stepping. And that for Allah only. But to know that if we train in this world of light then the potential is limitless from what Allah can give to His servants, inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Wa alaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi, when attempting to change our frequency through the connection and spiritual practices, what are the outer signs that we are moving forward through veils? What are the outer signs that we're, we are moving backwards? Anyone trying to connect, I rarely think they move backwards. The sign of moving backwards is when you stop trying to connect. That you're not taking the connection, you're not trying to do the work. The knowing of knowledge and the practices of the connection are two separate. Some people may know a lot of knowledge and said, I've heard all the talks, I wrote all the notes for the talks. They may not actually do any of the practices to make the connection, to understand the frequencies and the energies but they got the talks all down. But that's, that's only a portion of the reality. They got like thumbnails from you know like Mahdi makes YouTubes with a whole bunch of thumbnails because the talk is only a portion of the reality. That when they make the connection and have a strong connection in that world of light, their soul is connecting to the soul of the shaykh, the download of the knowledges begins to flow into the heart. But they're also somebody whom took the battle and understand the spiritual battle and the difficulty of keeping the connection, making the connection. So that's the I- immense importance of, of why then the shaykh isolates himself from people so that everybody tries to connect. Because it's a handicap to be in their physical presence and it's more important that everybody connect, connect, connect your heart. So that you enter into the spiritual realm and receive the fires and the energies that are necessary. And the knowledges will be completed only through the download and the connection. These are the importance of the difficulties of coming upon this earth and how to reach towards these energies inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi, I came across a nasheed called Ibad Allah, Rijal Allah. While doing my meditation, it felt like electricity moving up and down my legs and my upper part of my body got all heated up. Ya Sayyidi, please explain to me what is happening as it happens frequently when doing my meditation. Yes, alhamdulillah, this is just the energies you try to make your connection with everything we've talked about. <clears throat> Make the energy connection, connect with the shaykh, connect your heart uh, and uh, keep trying to connect and make your connection so that the soul connection becomes very strong. This is the, the whole way on how to keep the soul connection, do your khidmat, build the relationship and uh, everything is based on that relationship. That when you love Prophet you have to show it. Right? So you make your salawat, you do your, your khidmat, you do all of these things. This way is based on love and that love has to be shown in every action that we do. Then the love becomes sincere and through the soul and heart. If that bond occurs then there's no way to break it. And that's what's necessary for these, these realities and these connections. Once we make the soul connection then everything is based on this world of light. So you know there's a miraculous nature of cats and Allah Allah gives a secret in every animal. 
So we talked about the reality of the ant, how he communicates and lives, lifts what 30 times to 20 times his weight. How do you do that? And you have little tiny legs and a big belly, little tiny legs lift 20 times or 30 times his weight. So Allah wants us to know that, you know, I don't know why you people think it's so difficult. It's because maybe people lack faith. But then look at the cat that, you know, the cat catches things by its zikr. They, they don't like too much to be touched, they don't want too much affection because they got work to do. When they begin to make their zikr, they can clean out a space that they know when negative and nefarious energies are entering. As soon as they begin their zikr they can start to attack and to capture things. And spiritual things don't like cats because of their very powerful zikr. They can come near somebody and begin through sound therapy heal somebody. They say the bone which is the most difficult part of human body to heal that takes so much time, the purring and the dhikr of the cat heals the bones. What about then things that are moving through humans because the, the unseen world is ten times our world for people not to be disturbed but Jinn are not only creatures that come and say hello to you, the jinn world means the snakes, the roaches, spiders, jinn creatures that we can't imagine, ten times the human race. So your home is filled with these creatures. This is what gives people disease and sicknesses and difficulties. If it attaches to people it makes them to be in pain or sickness and difficulties. What's one of the powers of the cat? They clean out these things. So the cat comes into an environment and look like he's jumping around, running around when he's a little bit more mature but all night long he's catching things. So by day daytime he has to recharge his battery like the jinn world because he's active when they're active because he's dealing with them. So in daytime you see him sleeping, he says, oh this guy's sleeping, why is this a worthless tenant, he doesn't even pay rent. But <laughs> he's sleeping to recuperate because all night long he was cleaning the house with his zikr and chasing and, and doing every kind of thing and he doesn't need to do much, he just sit, he start making dhikr, his zikr can capture and begin to capture creatures. So may Allah gave this in a cat, you don't think insan who has at least the knowledge to read the kitab and the book and make their connection with Prophet how powerful they are. Then a UFO guy came and a very famous UFO guy, he sat down and said, okay tell us you know you talk so much about UFOs, how do you communicate with UFOs? And he says, you know this is all subconscious work, you literally train meditate, you can send your spirit into their ships and communicate with them. He literally was trying to teach Muraqaba on Sci-Fi Channel because their understanding, science people are at least now understanding, wait we are a very powerful being. Are you telling me you're just relying on this flesh and blood for something? But Allah gave us, especially people whom believe and follow Prophet immense power, you know, that when you connect and you make the connection that uh, where you can send your soul and what that soul can do and, and uh, there's not a thing moving in these areas that the soul of awliya are not watching, monitoring and entering, they enter into every area, there is nothing restricted for them, there's no restricted area. Their soul enters and monitors everything. This is Allah's izzat and might. So imagine then the power and the power of the soul. 
Then you understand if you really understood the power of the soul, why are they making us dumb? Why are they giving us these devices? Why are they putting on these ridiculous TV shows and, and, and social media apps? Why? So that God forbid you should ever open your heart and your spiritual ability. You would enter into all of their areas, you would monitor and see exactly what they're doing especially those whom have a key to the heavens because they believe in La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah most powerful key in all of creation. That's why they don't want it and they don't like it and they say, use this social media, use these uh, devices so that never open your heart. But uh, a day is coming and they can't, they can't keep that hidden forever, inshaAllah. People will be astonished how much they were lied to and how much power the soul has, how much power the heart has. And they were fed trash instead of the treasures of the heavens. That's when a great revolt will begin, when people are really awakened to see what, what has been sort of… Uh, what type of a hood was put upon their head of what the potentials of the soul and, and this entire creation, its potential and its ability and to be limited to the garbage that's being offered and the, the realities that are being offered from dunya. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzata wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Yes, it's recommended to get a cat. If everybody heard that about the cat, anybody who can have a cat and uh, it's not going to destroy all your furniture or your apartment doesn't allow it then it's recommended to get a cat inshaAllah, have a lot of power. InshaAllah bin niyata khatmi khaw jikan. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.